Hi. Hi, I'm Madison. Hi, I'm Anna. Hi, I'm Fiona. Hi, I'm Carly. Hi, my name is Rochelle, and I'm part of GSA MHS. Hi, my name is Kitty, and I am the Middletown High School Gay Straight Alliance Vice President. And today we're going to be doing a presentation on how to be an ally to the LGBTQIA plus community. Hi, I'm Kaya, and I'm president of the GSA. Uh, the GSA functions as a safe space at the high school and typically hosts events to promote inclusion of the LGBTQIA plus community, um, like Solidarity Week, National Coming Out Day, Diversity Day, and Day of Silence. Thank you for watching our presentation. The Middletown High School GSA is proud to share with you this presentation with the effort and goal to spread awareness about the LGBTQ community, provide support services and resources, and to offer suggestions as to how to be a ally and support network for the LGBT community here in Middletown. Thank you. The GSA works to spread awareness and dispel any misconceptions about the LGBTQIA plus community and also provide a welcoming environment for everyone, counter homophobia, and also offer any resources in case you want to do any research or help the community in any way. The goals of this presentation are to answer some common questions about the LGBTQ community, discuss some common microaggressions, discuss how to be a true ally, talk about ways to have productive conversations, and provide the community with resources. So a lot of people don't know what the letters in the LGBTQ plus acronym stand for, or they just don't know what the words mean, so I'm going to explain those for you. To start off, the L stands for lesbian, which is when a female is attracted to another female. Next, the G stands for gay, which is attraction to the same gender, but it's also an umbrella term, so depending on how you identify, lots of people can use it. B stands for bisexual, which the most common definition for that today is attraction to multiple genders rather than just two. T stands for transgender, which is when someone who was born one gender identifies as a different one today. An example of this would be when someone who was born as a female identifies as a male today. Q stands for queer or questioning. So queer is when someone is not identifying as straight or cis. Cis meaning identifying with the sex or gender you were born with. And questioning is just someone questioning their identity. Intersex is individuals born with any several variations in sex characteristics. Intersex can be defined as when a person is born appearing one gender but has mostly the opposite gender's typical um, organs or parts on the inside um, or may have multiple um, sexual organs or some that blur the line between a clear um, cisgender identification. Asexual is no sexual attraction towards anyone. Pansexual is attraction regardless of gender or identity and demisexual is attraction after making a strong emotional connection with a specific person. This is outdated slash currently inappropriate terms. Whether you are a part of the LGBTQI plus community or not, there are many terms that you may have heard or have been used in the past. And much like other racist terms that were once considered acceptable, these terms today are considered offensive and inappropriate. So the first one is that's so gay or that's so queer, which implies that being gay or queer is a bad thing. Moving down the list, we have homosexual, transsexual, or the T-slur which are all very outdated and offensive. Next, we have you're turning gay, which would imply that one, it is a bad thing, and two, it is a choice. The next one is looking sus, and I just wanna clarify that that is not in reference to the popular game Among Us. Next, we have no homo, which also implies that being gay would be a bad thing. Referring to someone as it, as opposed to their preferred pronouns, is also incredibly invalidating and offensive. The phrase sexual preference also implies that being LGBTQIA plus is a choice, which it is not. And gay lifestyle is also not a good phrase to use because LGBTQIA plus lives are very diverse and lifestyle implies that it is a choice made on how to live your life. In order to have a productive conversation about the LGBTQ community, um, you want to first understand that the conversations surrounding identity are really sensitive. Um, you want to make sure that you're not asking someone to share their identity. And if they do choose to share it with you, it's not your information to share with others. You want to be open to learning and ask questions without making assumptions. 
you want to be able to share your current thoughts and understandings of certain subjects. You don't want to criticize or invalidate other identities, and you want to be willing to ask for resources to follow up with the conversation afterwards. Demonstrating allyship. An ally will seek out opportunities to demonstrate support for the LGBTQ plus community. In a situation where inappropriate behavior is taking place, a bystander would just give a dis disapproving look, walk away, or only say something after the fact. But ally action steps go a step further. A bystander response. 1. Not showing visual support or dislike for the community. An ally would demonstrate visual signs of support with something like a flag. 2. I don't care if people are gay. An ally would say, I'm supportive of all sexual gender orientations. 3. Witnesses a degrading conversation about the LGBTQIA plus community. Instead, an ally would step into the conversation and call out the problematic behavior. This next slide is about handling negative comments about the LGBTQ plus community. When these comments arise, you want to call it out in front of everybody. Not calling it out may lead to dismissal by others, which does not solve a problem. You want to continue by giving an explanation of why these words or actions are unacceptable, especially when someone is using inappropriate terms about the community. So in a situation where one might witness a concerning conversation, an ally response would be, hey, cut it out. A better ally response would be, that's not appropriate. That language is discriminatory and offensive. An ally response may also be addressing the person privately. A better ally response would be addressing the person publicly. And another ally response would be defending the victim and implying that their action is only wrong if the person is gay. A better ally response would be condemning the action regardless of who is present. There are many different organizations focused on helping LGBTQ plus youth and adults in their everyday lives. The first organization that we're going to talk about is GLAD, or Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. What they do is they work to shape and rewrite the script for LGBTQ plus acceptance. PFLAG, which stands for Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. It is a confidential peer support education and advocacy um, organization in the community. Another organization that we're going to talk about today is GLSEN or Gay, Lesbian, and Support Education Network. It's an organization which is dedicated to protecting the rights of the LGBTQ plus youth within their schools. HRC, which stands for the Human Rights Campaign. They advocate for equal rights across all communities, including, including the LGBTQ plus community.